Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink and you're listening to the Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a video game. Today we're going to be talking about Battle of the Bulge, a game brought to you by Shenandoah Studio and Slytherin Group. Previously, this was a mobile release. However, it was brought to PC just recently with an updated AI, multiplayer functions, and a bunch of tweaks and improvements to the game itself. We're going to judge this product on its own merit, go ahead and run through the gameplay, what it has to offer and then I'll give you my opinion after we cover everything. Here in the main menu, we have a little history button. This is going to be the entire background of the Battle of the Bulge, an incredibly well-documented source of information for the events that happened around this time period. You've got biographies of the generals, day-by-day -day calendar, strategic background and planning, everything that you need to know about this entire conflict is inside this little folder here. And I would highly encourage anybody who picks up this game to read it. So, let's go ahead and dive into what this game actually brings to the table as far as playing goes. I gotta warn you before we get there though, that this is not a game for everyone. If you're looking for big shiny toys, tons of explosions, and a high content experience, this is not your type of game. If you like detailed historical simulations of real battles and you like war game type turn based strategy, then this is going to be something that may interest you and go ahead and stick around see what you think. Let's go ahead and play a game. We're going to go against a computer opponent and we're going to play the entire battle. We'll get a few turns into it as we're going over this review and we're going to play it from the Axis side. You can see down here we've got three different generals. There are three for each side to play against that have differing strategies. So potentially you can get six playthroughs of this battle that are completely unique and then you can use the shuffle options to get several more playthroughs. There is only one scenario in this game. So the replayability is going to be the factor that keeps you coming back. Let's go ahead and play. Jumping into the main menu, you'll notice that there is authentic music. We've got 1940s tunes in the background. <laughs> it was a nice little touch that I thought was pretty cool. You've got your objectives listed out. We're basically moving towards the west. We are the Axis powers after all, trying to take the river on the left side of the map. If we can get across the Meuse River, by 1800 hours December 19th we score an automatic victory condition and then you've got all of the information that you need to know about the conditions leading up into this battle including artillery coverage uh, a layout of your supply grid and all that kind of stuff so we're gonna go ahead and jump in and take a look at what the gameplay actually looks like as I said before this is not something that is gonna show you real combat simulation Essentially, you have pit markers for your health and ammo on these units. You're going to be moving them in turns, one square of units per turn, once per day for each unit on your movement capabilities, and that will swap back and forth between the Axis and Allied powers. So, in the dawn of this game, you have three free moves going to the Axis powers because you had that surprise attack early in the morning. So we get to move three times. We're going to go ahead and queue up one here. We've got a combat preview, which is going to give us an overview of what we will most likely see. 75% likelihood we will not take any hits. And there is the likelihood of one from that one bullet that the cab has. And then on the left side, we've got the most likely possibilities being retreat and taking two hits for a total destruction. Let's go ahead and commit and see where this takes us. And we have retreat. So that space is ours. And then we get two more attacks. So you can pretty much see what the gameplay is going to be like on this. You're going to be just reading up statistics and looking at the likelihood of different scenarios. You can take back a move if you wish, if you don't like what the odds look like. But this is going to be your manner of moving around the map. As you can see, you've got a front line etched out. It is a continuous line, hopefully, from the south to the north. And if any of your units get cut off behind that line, if you just have them floating out in the middle somewhere, you are going to lose supply. And that means your units cannot move unless you reestablish a supply line. That means moving the front to encapsulate those units. There's two ways to kill off groups. You can either surround them, cut them off, and that will prevent them from moving, or 
you can outright kill them. Our goal is to get across the river, so we're just going to go ahead and move a little bit further. Let's find one more to pick off with our surprise attack. Let's just go ahead and commit on that one. That looks like a likely win, and we do get it. Now the allies are going to move. This is pretty much how the entire flow of the game goes. It is kind of like strategic chess. You're going to be moving your pieces around, trying to get the other upper hand, and using your ability for vehicles to move three spaces at a time inside friendly territory to advance your units as far as you can in order to make up ground. Remember, you've only got three moves for each unit total before you have to be on the other side of the map. I can vouch for the difficulty of this game because I have tried for several hours to actually get a win condition and I have not succeeded yet. I've gotten one square away from victory and I was denied. So we've seen how the gameplay turns out. Let's go ahead and talk about my feelings about this game, where I would see reasoning to buy it and when you shouldn't. Essentially, this is a high level statistical strategy game. If you enjoy lots of numbers, historical accuracy, tons of details to learn about, and a war game style of play, then this might be something that interests you. If you're looking for full simulation of combat, then there is not going to be enough content here to keep you very busy. As I said before, I turned in, I think, about four hours of play, which judging by how much content you like in your games, that might be plenty for you to justify buying it. Um, I think there is a lot more hours to be had if you play against all of the different versions of the AI and try to get victory conditions. But all in all, I'd have to say this is not my style of game. However, I can say that this game delivers absolutely everything that it advertises. This game promises to deliver a realistic strategy experience, moving units around that were available during the actual Battle of the Bulge, dealing with historically accurate forces, and it does so brilliantly. I encounter no glitches, no bugginess, no issues whatsoever. Everything works as promised. So, if you like what you see in the description, if you like this style of gameplay, then definitely pick it up. It is a solid title but I would warn you not to pick it up if you're looking for something with full combat simulation because you're going to start beating your head against the wall on this difficult AI and you're probably not going to get much enjoyment out of this title. That's all I've got to say about it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, thumbs down and please leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and discuss it with you. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.